An event that is currently taking place becomes the catalyst for a future occurrence. It's impossible to pinpoint the start of this time loop. A fascinating facet of predestination is the notion that the time traveler can't change anything, even if he wants to. The incident will occur at its own pace, implying that historical events cannot be altered. It indicates that if a time traveler wished to modify the past, he would be unable to do so. To demonstrate the significance of the predestination paradox, I'll provide an example. Let's say you have a buddy whom you adore, and you phone her to find out she is coming to see you in her car, but she gets into an accident while talking to you. As a result, she dies on the scene. Because you loved her so much, your life becomes melancholy after she passes away. Time goes in the same way, and after 15 years, you build a time machine. With the time machine, you can go to any point in time. You'll never forget the day your friend died in a car accident. Now that you have a time machine, why don't you go back in time and save your friend? With the use of a time machine, you go to that day and arrive on the road in an automobile. On the road where your friend was on his way to see you. In a hurry, you start driving the car at a high pace. As a result, you lose control and collide with another vehicle. When you get out of the automobile, you notice that your passenger was none other than your pal. It implies that you can't change what happened in the past. You can only become a participant in the occurrence. I hope you understand what the predestination paradox is all about. Let us now turn our attention to the major plot of paradox predestination. Before we begin the film, let me tell you something that you must remember. The four characters in the film are all one person, Jane, Jones, Barkeep, and Fizzle Bomber. The distinction is because they are from different eras, such as the present, the past, or the future. The film begins with a man wearing a coat and a cap carrying a briefcase. This individual is a time traveler who travels back in time to prevent a devastating bomb blast. After some time, it will happen. He immediately begins attempting to defuse the device, but he has the distinct impression that someone is watching him. As a result of this, he becomes distracted, and the guy who fixed the explosive appears. He abandons the duty of defusing the bomb and begins looking for the man, which he does, and the two begin shooting at each other. The bomb's timer expires, and the bomb explodes. The man with the coat and cap is injured and his face is scorched as a result of the explosion. Then a third man appears and approaches the burned man. He slides a box towards him, which turns out to be a time machine, which transports him to the year 1992. This was the year he arrived in this period of time while traveling. Before we go any further, I'd like to point out that there were three people in the event we witnessed. The first was a man in a coat and cap who had arrived to defuse the device. Yone was his name, and he was the bomb's second fixer. Fizzle Bomber was his moniker, and he shot at Yone. Barkeep was the name of the third human who moved the machine towards Yone. They're the same guy, but they're from separate eras. They arrived here after traveling through time. Yone returns to 1992, with his burnt face, after the incident. His face had been burned, so he had surgery to replace it. Who is Yone and why does he travel through time, is the question. Yone was a bureau's agent. They offer their operatives a time machine so that they can use it to stop any incident. Yone was tasked with putting an end to Fizzle Bomber. Because Fizzle Bomber will detonate a bomb in New York in 1975. It will kill almost 10,000 people. Despite his best efforts, Yone was unable to defeat Fizzle Bomber until now. Yone has given him a new look thanks to surgery, therefore will now refer to him as Barkeep. Barkeep must perform a final task, so he travels back in time to 1970. He begins working as a barkeep. A barkeep is a person who manages a bar. In the bar, he meets Yone from the 1970s. They were conversing with one other here, and he was dressed in his adult attire. Because he was his adulthood, barkeep recognizes Yone, but Yone does not. Because of the changes in his face as a result of surgery, Yone informs Barkeep that he is a writer and begins to tell him about his background, telling him that he was born unfortunate and that his parents abandoned him outside the orphanage in 1945. Jane was the child's name as she got older, but no one adopted her. 
She notices that she is more powerful than the other orphans on several occasions in the orphanage. After being ignored by everyone, she decided to join the Space Corps program. She was performing admirably, but due to a physiological issue, she was disqualified. She wasn't told about it at the time, and the only reason she learned about it afterwards was because of a fight with a female there. Jane becomes depressed after being fired from the program, which is a fraud. After that, she enrolls at a night school where she encounters a stranger. She likes him, and everything is normal until one day a stranger approaches Jane and tells her that she is obligated to leave her forever. After the stranger, Jane's life was filled with sadness. Who was the stranger, and how will we learn more about him? Jane finds out she's pregnant, gives birth to a girl, and a doctor tells her she has unusual physiology. Female organs are found in regular women, whereas male organs are found in ordinary men. Jane's body, on the other hand, has both organs at the same time. They were fully grown, but due to the baby's complexion at birth, they had to remove her female organ, leaving Jane with only a male organ. Jane had become a man, and he would have to live his life like one. Jane was told by the doctor, and after a short time, she realizes that her baby has been taken. Despite her best efforts, she was unable to locate her daughter. Jane gradually begins to live her life as a man. She changed her name from Jane to Yone, and Yone told the barkeep everything that had happened. He comes to a halt here, thinking that barkeep will not trust him. Barkeep is aware of all of this because he is Yone's future. This was his life tale, as told to him by Yone. Yone is unaware that barkeep is his future. According to the barkeep, where might we find the stranger? This individual has devastated Jane's life. He assured Yone that he would not only take her to the stranger, but also offer her the opportunity to kill him. Whatever the outcome, it will be a success. While using the time machine, Yone and barkeep head to the time machine where Jane works at a night school. Yone has a gun and is about to shoot the stranger. He meets Jane while looking for the stranger, and she begins to like him. Yone realizes right on that the stranger he's trying to get rid of is none other than himself. It says he was Yone, Jane's favorite, and he left her, implying Yone had met his female future. While Jane and Yone were conversing, Barkeep sneaks away. He travels back in time to 1970 in order to defuse the bomb. It was the scene that was displayed at the beginning of the film. When Barkeep arrives, Fizzle Bomber is repairing the bomb. They fight, and Barkeep passes out as a result. When he comes to, he notices Yone, whose face has been scorched in defusing the bomb. While moving the time machine towards him, he assists him. In order for him to be able to return to his time period. During this time, Fizzle Bomber travels to the time when Jane gave birth to her daughter, and Barkeep travels to the time when Jane gave birth to her daughter. He meets with the Bureau's director. He also possessed a time machine, allowing him to travel through time. In the year 1945, Barkeep takes Jane's daughter from there and keeps her outside the orphanage. Not only did the male Yone and the female Jane have a relationship, but their daughter was also one of them. Perhaps this is why the girl has both female and masculine organs. The conundrum is known as the predestination paradox. We can't know when it's going to start, and the girl was born when her two forms collided. Barkeep arrives during the moment when Yone and Jane were together after keeping the girl outside the orphanage. Because he was seated on the bench with Jane, he calls Yone while pointing. This is when Yone tells his friend, I'm leaving you for good. Yone approaches Barkeep and informs him that we must now travel to the future. I am, as the Barkeep informs Yone, your future. While time traveling, Yone and Barkeep arrive in 1985. Barkeep meets with the Bureau's boss and departs without Yone. As a result, he will recover from his shock. He gives Yone his audio recording so that he can comprehend everything and follow along. Following his discussion with the Bureau's head, Barkeep retired in 1975. In 1975, a bomb will be detonated, as we all know. Barkeep travels back in time to 1975, when the bomb will detonate. Yone realizes the truth when he recovers in 1985 and listens to Barkeep's recording. 
After that, he becomes an agent. Yone becomes a permanent agent after seven years and time travels to 1970. In a coat and a cap, he arrives to detonate the explosive planted by the fizzle bomber. It's the scene from the beginning of the film. The fizzle bomber's antics draw Yone's attention away from his work. There was gunfire between them, and the bomb's timer expired during this period. As a result, the bomb explodes. Because of the blast, Yone's face is scorched. I hope you got who the three people in the first scene were and what they were up to. Barkeep reached the age of retirement in 1975. Because Barkeep is now retired, he tries to deactivate his time machine after the bombing in 1975. However, he was unable to do so since the file included a mistake, and when checking the file, he discovered a hint from the bureau's head. He can apprehend the fizzle bomber who will use it to detonate a bomb in New York. While using the clue, Barkeep arrives at the location where the fizzle bomber was. When Barkeep sees fizzle bomber, he becomes concerned since he is none other than his future disguise. It means Barkeep has been looking for his personal getup for a long time. Barkeep's time traveling appears to have had an effect on his mind after seeing Fizzle Bomber's condition. In the future, he is also rendered insane. This could be the basis behind Barkeep's decision to become a Fizzle Bomber. To stop the attack, he kills a lot of people. Fizzle Bomber is how Barkeep ends his future. He keeps his time machine a secret from the Bureau's head. Because of an error, his machine was still operational. The question is whether Barkeep will eventually become Fizzle Bomber. He ended Fizzle Bomber, but he didn't notify Bureau's head about his time machine, as we saw. His time machine continues to function. This indicates that he will continue on his journey. In this film, we learn that time travel has an effect on a person's thinking. If Barkeep continues to travel across time, his psyche will be affected, and he will become Fizzle Bomber. The rationale for becoming a fizzle bomber is that the film is built on a paradox, and it forecasts that things would repeat themselves. I've already stated that a time traveler can't change anything. The second question.